Hello, my beautiful Leos, and welcome to your horoscope reading at this time with me, Blair, at the Oracle of Atlantis. So this is going to be a timeless reading. Whenever you come across it is when the messages are meant to reach you. So the Star Codes Astro Oracle had a few messages that wanted to come out for you. The first message, you have the energy of Juno with partnership. So what I'm being called to is the energy of the blue macaws here, right? So this definitely is a call to um, perhaps speak or communicate, or perhaps even for some knowing when to not speak or communicate to your partner, whether it's a business partner or relationship, right? Um, in relationships, there may be more um, need for communication. Um, for some relationships, though, maybe we're being a little too honest and we could draw back a little bit here. You do also have the energy of Taurus with Cultivate as the gift and challenge. So with Taurus's energy, we have the energy of Cultivating, right? So with this energy, Cultivating Partnerships obviously is a priority for you at this time, Leo. Juno, I can't really, I think Juno may be an asteroid. Juno, I know, was Zeus's, like, first, no, sorry, Juno was the second wife, wasn't she? Yes, Juno is an asteroid. The asteroid Juno points out how you may have been trained to choose between love and work and offers clues on how to balance them instead. This asteroid was named after the daughter of Saturn, wife of Jupiter mother of mars she is queen the organizer of society and she rules the roost juno and jupiter modeled an uneasy but equal partnership that took a lot of work and had great rewards sorry if you hear some background noise there are people working on the roof next door to me in work and love juno wants you to trust that you can hold steady on your life's path and develop equal partnerships so get in there and wrestle to make the relationship work Research healthy relationship skills and study negotiation and mediation techniques. Practice respect, communication, love, and conflict. Resolution between the various facets of your own personality. Like Juno and Jupiter, strive to become two whole empowered souls who can express their individual potential, work around each other's foibles, and find balance. Be responsible for your own connection to the creative source. Spirit and your emotions. Don't ask another to carry your heart for you, as it makes it hard to accept their unique path. Live out your ambition through your own work rather than through your mate, children, employees, or coworkers. If you do so, you can encourage others' growth and exploration along with your own, and so create the foundations of great relationships and a sense of community. If you don't, you can devolve into jealousy or create monsters. If you want to be in a partnership but are not, examine any belief or training that said you have to give up what matters to you in order to partner up. If it's your choice to work alone, accept it. If not, expand that view and invite fresh possibilities. So for you Leos out there that are seeking partnership, um, it is unwise to change yourself to be with somebody else. But a lot of times we end up doing that. We end up um, being with someone and feeling like we have to change a, a lot of ourselves or we're going to, or we'll lose them, which could be the case. Um, maybe we will lose some people. Maybe they don't like all aspects of ourselves. Um, if that's the case, they're probably not the one, but obviously the one can be hard to find. But there is a need to cultivate in the relationships. And with the parrots, the parrots can be connected um, to, like, if you see a parrot in a dream, if it's talking, it can represent mimicking or spreading rumors. That's where I was getting this energy of both needing to speak and needing to hush up as well. Um, so with this, to be in partnership, it's one of the easiest ways um, for any of your partnerships, whether romantic or not, is to try to put yourself in another person's shoes in a situation. And it's not always fun, but you can kind of see yourself reflected back in them and have greater empathy for that and cultivate stronger relationships here. True partnership is a spiritual path. Its sacred acts are the practice of healthy relationship skills. These skills begin within. 
If you live out your ambition through your mate or work partner instead of through your own efforts, the situation can devolve into jealousy, manipulation, or disempowering micromanaging. So be careful of that viewer. So I'm going to clarify Juno's energy with partnership with the Light Sears Tarot. Ooh, we do have on the pre-shuffle here, we have your energies. There's strength required. I do love this strength card viewer because it does speak of the predator and the prey here. Finding that balance between one's strengths and one's weaknesses. Well, look at that you have a double Leo and then you have the sun. This will bring much joy. But let's take a look. Keep in mind, this is a collective reading. So the situation may um, differ for everyone. But let's see what the cards come out surrounding Juno with partnership for Leo for whenever they get this message. Leo, Juno. Hmm. So we have the Eight of Pentacles. And the Two of Swords. With this energy, for some of you that are in partnerships or maybe starting to date somebody, with the Two of Swords here, I'm almost getting the, um, the energy of rumors or things being said about somebody. And when you're in a partnership, it's just very important to clarify that energy with your partner, right? Maybe that's where this communication needs to come in. Maybe you heard something from somebody. I'm kind of just getting that from these crows here. The two of swords can represent choices and decisions that need to be made. You need to make some choices here. While the eight of pentacles is continuing to put in the hard work and loving what you do. So this could be um, like the Juno card suggested building your home your family your community your career for your own path and not necessarily leaning so hard on your partners if you are in partnership but this is also loving what you do so finding that kind of inspiration or joy or contentment with what you do but there are definitely choices that need to be made here viewer the two of swords she does go into kind of meditation you may want to meditate on whatever question you have at this time sit with that energy for a little bit and then you may want to ask friends family partners for their advice on the best path forward now the underlying energy you do have the ace of wands here so the ace of wands is the ace of fire right some sort of creative spark or passion an idea And behind that, you have the King of Pentacles. So the King of Pentacles is the King of Earth. So what I was getting at is this, originally this idea could create a lot of prosperity and abundance for you. This doesn't have to be monetary. It could be, you know, um, an idea to help somebody out, right? And then abundance comes back to you for putting that good karma out. Whatever this is, this is very opportunistic energy together here. There may be some tricks and deception along the way. You have the Devil and the Four of Swords. So the Four of Swords really is a card of meditation and sleep. So there may be dreams, night terrors, subconscious fears, um, feeling that whatever you're working so hard for is going to break. But this can be an, an illusion of the mind here. Then you have the King of Swords and the Four of Pentacles. So the Four of Pentacles, it can be a card about feeling guarded, jaded, a little blocked, like you got your walls up. But the Four of Pentacles asks us to honor and love ourselves for who we are. You don't need anything or anyone except for who you are. I shouldn't say anyone. Maybe we do need people here in our lives. The King of Swords offers some sort of clarity or perception, following logic. So we have the Raven here, which can represent um, thought and memories, which we did have that energy with the Devil and the Four of Swords, right, of sleeping. So there could be things coming through your mind, most definitely. The Owl represents retaining the wisdom from the situations. If you're having like nightmares about a partnership, whether in business or romance, um, for most of you, I would say it's probably more business end with that eight of pentacles. It doesn't have to be. Um, what was I going to say?
I totally lost my train of thought. Retaining the wisdom, something about your dreams. Oh, when you see your dreams, you can recognize it. Um, like if you have a night terror, a lot of times our night terrors, if we actually kind of break it down and look back at the dream can actually symbolize our own fears and they kind of haunt us. But the whole point is to overcome those fears. They're just, they're just dreams. They're nightmares. They're not necessarily fact or truth. You're being asked to look to the future with hope and optimism with the two of wands. You do have the hangman coming out reverse. So to me, this would suggest, um, the hangman is all about taking a pause, a, a break, a moment out to yourself to recoup. This is reverse. I would see this is coming out of a time of hibernation. So it may be a time really here to act when it comes to your partnerships to cultivate them, viewer. Then we move into Taurus's energy with cultivate. So Taurus um, represents house number two, which can be our set of uh, possessions and our possessions linked to our self-worth and how we feel about ourselves. So this definitely applies when it comes to partnerships too, because if we have low self-worth, um, if we're triggered a lot, if we've been through traumatic experiences, it may be hard to open up truthfully from a clear and balanced state with another person. So there's this energy of self-love and focus. Taurus excess can lead you to mistake stubbornness for strength or look for spiritual and emotional answers in the material world. There will never be enough stuff to fill an emotional void. See, that's where possessions come in, right? We kind of see this in the Eight of Pentacles. This is like surrounding yourself with adic adequate possessions, things that you like, perhaps like, I don't know, plants, books natural things around you to bring out your natural energy if you're the type of person likes to shop a lot um this could be a void that you're trying to fill um that is a form of addiction right and i do this from some from time to time as well if i get in a down period i'll go shopping and buy a few things and that'll kind of distract me from what's bringing me down right just kind of get me through taurus asks you to hold still dig in and grow your roots and strengthen over time Manifest in a practical way, signified by a bull standing in its field, Taurus rules the neck and voice. Its purpose is to bring life into matter through growing wildflowers and crops, through our muscular strength and the sensual potential of our bodies and through the solidness of our material resources. Work with the metaphor of gardening. Plow the garden plant the seeds, nurture the crops with water and fertilizer, and protect those crops from predation. Preda predation? So that's protecting these kind of partnerships, nurturing them, watering them, weeding, right? So having the difficult conversations, having the good conversations, finding the equal balance and way forward here. Investigate what concrete form your project should take and next practical steps in that direction. Appreciate the senses. Notice what you see, smell, hear, feel, and taste. Use the senses to be in the present moment and let time flow by. Cuddle. Feed. In a relationship, listen to both the, the signals of body chemistry and the practicalities of your life to give it a fertile field. Cultivate your garden... Like a slowly growing flower basking in the sun, find contentment in this moment. Explore the roots of the situation. Ask what feeds this idea or what feeds your soul. If you're feeling pushed about, sit, hold still, grow roots, and let the storm pass over you. Don't hurry. Play the long game as you plant and tend to your crops. Everything that surrounds you is made up of matter, and the word matter comes from the Latin word matter or mother. Taurus connects you to the sacred earth mother Gaia herself, the physical vessel who holds spirit in the body, in the plants, and in the earth beneath us. So we have the um, 21, which is the world, which is about um, breaking cycles, moving in new directions, new cycles, right? So definitely um, a call to work with the Earth's energy at this time. And I was kind of getting from the Eight of Pentacles. You may want to invest in some plants. Um, 
I have, I've been investing in more plants recently and it helps because the more you have, the more frequently you can water them if you don't water them all, right? Because it's, it's can be a tough balance with plants. And doing this, I don't know, it just, it just gives us nurturing energy. Plus when you're like working with the soil and the smell of fresh wet soil just really cleanses the sen senses, but you're really being called to connect with earth here. So you may want to get out and ground. I mean, it is summertime, so probably a lot of people will be outside enjoying the earth and the fresh air anyway, but definitely your advice at this time. There, I'm getting this message that there may be a call to save or put away money at this time. There could be um, kind of like a, an expensive outing, like a vacation or... I wanted to say funeral, but I'm getting wedding coming up that you may need money for. Um, but yeah, there's this energy of trying to um, put a little away in a savings account for a rainy day here. So let's take a look at Cultivate with, oh, oh, look at that, too funny. I just, this card, I can't even, right? It's just clarifying everything that Taurus card said about tilling the soil and planting the seeds and watering, the, watering them and nurturing, right? You're cultivating, you're growing and strengthening. The Eight of Cups here, though, is a call of walking away from something. I do actually want to read this card, the Eight of Cups, because it has a different, I think it has a different meaning in this deck, to be quite honest. She has released her last cup into the sea, and her bowl burning ceremony is over. It is time, is it time to walk away from something in your life? Choose your sacred dream, especially when you're feeling disappointed, is one of the biggest acts of self-love that you can enact. When you take the very first step, you begin to choose yourself. There is nothing more healing or more powerful. Find your resolve and untether any anchors that are holding you back. Through your delusioned heart, though your delusioned heart may require some TLC, you can realign your path by shedding outgrown expectations, hope, people, ideas, beliefs, guilt, or way of being. If you find yourself exhausted or confused or jumping from thing to thing, know that you are entering a mystical period of intense shifting and that releasing old stories will help you to travel lightly. Go in the direction of epic dreams, happiness, and greater meaning. I walk away from negativity and I choose myself in a rebellious act of self-love. So that is the affirmation of letting go, releasing that which no longer serves you, a ritual releasing, a time to move, stuck energy, walking away, leaving your old reality to pursue a new one, abandonment and disappointment. This can be really hard, viewer, if you have abandonment issues because I have been through this energy myself in partnerships. Um, used to people abandoning you so you don't believe anyone would actually stick around here. This could be the fears that are cycling in your head. So the affirmation, I walk away from negativity and I choose myself in a rebellious act of self-love. The Seven of Pentacles, a pause, states of gratitude, reflecting on your journey, waiting to harvest the fruits of your labor, and a sign to keep going. I'm just hearing the energy of, I think it's called Cruel Summer by Taylor Swift. Um, to be fair, I did just get back from the store before I started your reading, and that was like the last song on the radio, and I remember thinking it because every time I get in my car lately, it's Taylor Swift, and it's kind of like, I don't know, I don't, I don't hate Taylor Swift, I've always liked Taylor Swift, but it gets kind of annoying, you know? Anyway, Cruel Summer, um... Sorry if you do like Taylor Swift, but that song may have some resonance with you. You're almost there. You've been doing the work and your wildly successful roots are growing. Which is beautiful with that Eight of Pentacles. Because the Eight of Pentacles is all about putting in the work. And that could be even just the work into yourself. It doesn't have to necessarily be a career or job, right? We do have the energy of partnership. So chances are you're putting the work into your partnerships. Or maybe choices and decisions that need to be made. You win some, you lose some, right? You may not see the fruits of your labor yet. 
Know that they exist and that any lack you are feeling is simply residual energy that's been being worked through. It's, oh, angel number 66, you might want to look into. 66 reduced would be a 12, and I do see that as Pisces energy. I'm kind of seeing this in this bird here, because Pisces energy is represented by the koi fish, right? Except for their 69ing. Pretty much. Yeah. The koi fish are like chasing each other, right? Where it's like these two parrots are eye to eye, face to face. Um, so that could be a call for some not to chase after people. Which can be really hard. Especially if you are a social person, you may like to chase after people. But there's this energy of... The energy. Energy, I kind of like that. This energy of honoring yourself and self-love and not needing to chase after people to focus on your dreams, goals, and ambitions here. Because um, it was Juno that asked you not to... Like, don't make your whole life about your partner's life or your child's life if you have children or somebody else's life. Your life needs to be about you. It's time to fall into faith and to pause and give thanks. Realize that you are the living, breathing result of all your memories, hopes, and hard work. Keep going. This moment gives you a divine interlude to revisit your purpose and direction. Your arrival is possible only after you pinpoint the destination. Has your journey shifted so much that what you originally germinated is not the thing you desire to harvest? What needs to change to satisfy your deepest intentions? If you are feeling any frustration or lack of progress, remember that giant dreams are not built in a day. Take a moment to breathe and reflect as these profound, sacred breaths can reinvigorate and realign. So you may want to try that, um, taking deep breaths viewer and try imagining the, um, I don't know. I, I, I do a lot of imagery when I'm breathing. Like you can kind of breathe even one, well, obviously we breathe all the time, but like when you're watching TV, you can breathe. If you have a certain body part that's ish, like hurting you, you can kind of breathe into that, um, and try to. The more you do it, the more you can kind of start to see the bones and the muscles through your mind's eye of the body and try to like recalibrate and or fix it through energy work. So that may be something. Um, the breath work though, I was kind of getting this energy of the chakra systems are all along the spine here, like straight up the spinal cord from brain to ass. <laughs> um, but with that energy, when you breathe into it, it's very much the energy of almost, um, it's a, it's a, like a energetic spiritual pathway, very much like when Moses parts the sea, right? There's this opening and clearing and purging of energies to heal the residual toxins from within or the, anything that lingers from the past to heal that you can kind of. You can work with color therapy using different colors to energetically um, heal your entire body, your aura. You can work with light energy. As I give thanks for what I am about to harvest, I know that my life is headed in the right direction, right? She is walking away. It's almost like you're going to make a choice here through cultivating and meditating, asking around, speaking with people, right? You're going to make a choice and walk away from something finally. And obviously the situation is going to be different for every one of you out there, Leo. This card can also be a call to um, do like a sacred releasing ritual. So you can write down prayers, um, things that you have fear of, things that you have shame of, things that you wish were different, right? It's almost like you write it down, set it on fire, you're giving it to God, you're releasing it, you're not holding on to it, you're asking for this stuff to be released, healed, fixed, or brought to you, whatever the case may be.
So I want to dive into the future energies coming in for you. I do love, we have the chariot showing up here. So the chariot is Cancer's energy, but this is getting like kind of like your your hopes and fears here, your light and shadow energies, your subconscious and conscious energy on the same track to move things forward. So this may even be getting on the same track with partnerships, right? We have the Ten of Pentacles making appearance, so definitely a chance and opportunity for stable success here. Future energies for Leo. We have the High Priestess. Ooh, and the Five of Swords. So the Five of Swords isn't great. This is a choice that we make that essentially is bad and you will feel some sort of regret with, which is interesting coming out with the High Priestess because the High Priestess is all about following our intuition. So um, there can be a lot of energies that come through our intuition. So you may follow the wrong voice, so to speak. Then we have the Hierophant and the Ace of Cups. So all is not lost. This very much, I kind of actually love this viewer because you have the high priestess, which is basically your energy tapping into your intuition, your gut feeling. But that can all be affected by past experiences, especially if you um, have not been able to trust people. One thing I have learned on my own journey is I have a huge issue when it comes to trust with people over the years. I haven't always had this issue. It's just been more recently over the past few years or so. But then I come to realize that the more you get to know yourself, the more you understand yourself. There are things within myself that I don't trust. So it's kind of, it makes sense that a lot of the reason I don't trust a lot of people is because sometimes I can't always trust myself right especially with like perhaps you know like desires things of that nature that's what I mean I don't always trust myself with that because temptation is very easy to fall into right but with this energy it's like you trusted your own instinct you you go with your own gut with something here in the future it doesn't pan out there's some regret and guilt this is kind of like beating yourself over the coals for making a stupid choice. But that is where you reconnect to the divine. Now, the Hierophant isn't necessarily God, but the Hierophant is the higher universal laws and truth. So this is reaching out, seeking prayer, energy cleansing, healing to ascend to a higher level frequency here, which opens up your heart to newer platforms, a higher perspective. The Ace of Cups being your heart and soul. It's like you're um, evolving, I want to say, through the, the element of water here. And the High Priestess is Cancer's energy as well. So connecting to water may help you through this energy in the future. Ooh. But then we have the Knight of Cups. So I love this. It's almost like you make the wrong choice, but it pushes you in the right direction. And you did have that... Didn't you already have something coming out in your reading saying that? Going in the right direction. The Knight of Cups is very kind of like romantic type of energy. They may be a little... Like the Knight of Cups isn't the king. So the king is like emotionally stable and wise. The Knight of Cups may be a little more... Um, I don't know if there be highs and lows. There may be. It's romance, right? Especially with the opening of the heart here. So this could be a new romance. This could be um, evening, even the expansion for those of you who are already in a relationship. An expansion of the romance that you already have. But very beautiful energy coming in for you. The Knight of Cups, there also could be a message that comes in for you in the future of a romantic nature. Um, you will have to use your own judgment because now I'm cycling back to the High Priestess energy. And if there's a romantic message that comes in for those of you that are already in a relationship, um, sometimes we can, we can enjoy attention, especially new attention, right? Because when we meet people, it's very surface level. 
people are drawn to you, they like you. It's exciting, right? So people may be drawn to you, they may like you. Your partnerships, um, your long-lasting partnerships can become kind of content and quiet after a while, right? You may run out of things to speak of. It's not always exciting. So there may be somebody in the future that comes in that admires you, right? Maybe you admire them. Maybe there's characteristics that you like, and this could be the choice that you regret in the long run. Because it's always, it's always beautiful during the honeymoon stage. It's when you get deeper with people and you get to know them. Like, how much do you actually like them? And I have to say, like, just observing people over the years, like, it's not always easy to like people. A lot of things people like seem odd or weird but then if you think of how many people and how many different choices and different likes and dislikes and all that like it's it can be a conundrum of two people coming together that are like perfect for each other right sometimes you win sometimes you lose you already had that coming through it's like picking our battles here And now I don't want to talk in circles. Um, 88 may have some significance as well. I'm just noticing the Eight of Pentacles and the Eight of Cups. For some of you, you could be walking away from a job. Not all of you. Some of you may have to... It's like leave a job to move somewhere to be with somebody... And I heard yes in my head. Make the move. Some of you are going to, or someone may actually be able to help somebody here. This may not be you, viewer. This actually may be somebody else what, is what I'm getting. Tapping into your intuition and following the guidance, you may be able to help somebody open their heart to pursue somebody else. Very much maybe helping somebody else find love. But regardless, in the future, there's definitely this healing taking place with the Ace of, Qu Ace of Cups. Fresh water, maybe drink more water, be conscious of drinking more water. The, the Hierophant can be definitely a call to connect to the divine, to pray, to meditate, to connect to one's intuition. Um, there may be healing energies that come through that kind of give you a headache, but they are evolving the... Um, the emotions that reside within the heart and soul. There's almost like a cleansing here and a reuniting of um, like empathy or romance within your own journey viewer. So for the closing words of wisdom, I'm going to pull you a rune viewer from the Elder for the Ark, and then we're going to grab you an animal spirit guide. So you have two runes that want to come out. The first rune, you have the energy of Jero, Jera. 
Harvest, fruitful harvest, celebration, and prosperity. It is kind of reversed here. I mean, this is kind of, oh, my finger is turning. Um, a spinning rune. Oh, it really can't be reversed. I was kind of getting, just from the imagery, um, it's not yet time yet. You're still putting in the work for your harvest. Or a call to enjoy the harvest as it comes. Ooh, and then we have manas, meaning man, the self, the inner self development and soul searching. So this is compared to Odin's throne. And his two ravens hugging and munning, speaking in his ear, as in these are the beaks, right? So thought and memory are helping you with your inner self development here. Just coming through, oh, I put it back, in that King of Swords energy. Which could be why this Five of Swords comes in in the future, because it's not always a fun ride. <laughs> it's actually usually, usually kind of a, a bitch to, um, to bear witness to thyself. But soon enough, you will be coming out of this hiberna hibernation mode with the bear. There may be a call to connect to the moon, to the lunar cycles, to honor your inner truth. But what is the animal spirit guide from the wild unknown? Closing message for Leo at this time. Helio says hi. Heard him meowing in the background. He didn't say no for once. He always he's always saying no, no, no. Helios is the sun god. Hi, baby. Mom. So definitely um, get out and enjoy the sun, right? That could be for some of you too, working outside with this Ace of Cups. Um, making sure you're getting enough water so you don't become dehydrated, right? Then you have this swan, which is a water element card. What's up, baby? Just gonna stop and lick your balls, hey? Wouldn't that be convenient? Everless creativity, sensitive mystic, and elegant power, the swan. So the swan also represents self-reflection here. The swan represents heightened creativity. In Hindu mythology, the goddess Saraswati, the embodiment of language, creativity, and artistry, rides on the back of this graceful creature. The swan is ready to take us there to the fluid realm of writing, creating, and reflecting. This potent and healing energy is not to be taken for granted or taken lightly. When the swan card appears, your soul is calling for attention. For solo time, an inner voice is waiting to be heard, an inner vision likely to be revealed. When in balance, infinite creative power. When out of balance, agitated, snippy, and lacking vision. To bring into balance, solo time and writing. So the swan represents wisdom and includes awakening the power of self, balance, grace, inner beauty, innocence, self-esteem, seeing into the future, understanding spiritual, understanding sp spirituality, evolution, evolution, developing intuitive abilities and grace in dealing with others and commitment. It's funny, in all your cards I was just looking at, 
other than, you know, spirit guides, animal guides, right? Alone, 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 alone. So, um, for some of you, this obviously maybe is the call, like many seeking romance, love, desire, darling. Um, but this, you do have the energy of partnership. So this is very much like almost the advice I would see as don't forget to enjoy some alone time as well. You and or your partner may actually need alone time. So that you don't, um, you know, kill each other <laughs> if you have a partner or if you're coming into a partnership to remember that take time alone so that you don't get lost in somebody else's energy or get overwhelmed or frustrated, right? Um, that is just solid advice, taking time to oneself to, um, to do this, to do the shadow work, to do this healing energy and self-reflecting. So your creativity, especially with this Ace of Cups here, like through your artistry, writing, whatever you create is actually an expression of your deeper emotions and thoughts. Um, I did drawings a while ago and I went through a little, I want to call it initiation, and I started looking back on my drawings and there was all these hidden symbols or energies and I was connecting everything to people. And I like, I mean, some of these drawings I did when I was like, I don't know, 14, I'm 35. Like some of these images were coming out and it was like, holy crap. It's like I was divinating my whole life. But then you start to realize it's kind of like your actual self-expression, your emotions, your character, who you are. It comes out in a form that you don't even recognize until you go through the situations and um, go through the experience and then you come back and you can see it's almost like you foretold your own your own destiny or trail right like it's what is that line um, life imitates art that's a Lana, Lana Del Rey song life imitates art I think it's gods and monsters beautiful song anyway but it's true life totally does imitate art it's like the artist put out these these art forms and then we follow them and the next thing you know we're in some sort of evolved creation of that arm art form so you may notice that in the things that come out in your in your words in your writing in your own create creative expression so i will leave the reading there i hope it helps i hope it resonates if it does hit that thumbs up don't forget to subscribe and I will see you next time. Many blessings, live love and light. Thank you for watching. Bye for now.